When you first log into your D2L shell, you're going to see a pop-up window. Make sure that you watch the videos that are inside the pop-up window so you know how to navigate the course. In this welcome window pop-up, it will start with how to get started. This will explain where to start in the course in Start Here Module Zero with the Module Zero introduction. You need to read through this as it is the course structure, course documents, and syllabus of the course. It will explain what is required and what is expected of you. When you're done with that, you will want to review the material in Module 1. Then we'll move on to Module 2 with the introduction to Module 2. There are also two videos in here. This video will be the second of the two videos. The first video is simply how to navigate D2L, and it only lasts a few minutes. Then the last page will be information about your instructor. This will include their contact information. To get rid of the welcome widget, you can click on dismiss and it will not pop up again. Or you can click on the X window and it will pop up the next time you log into D2L. Once you're in your course and you have watched the welcome window pop up, go ahead and click on content. After you've clicked on content, you'll want to look at the left menu. The top welcome to pre-calculus is the information that's in the welcome window pop-up. You do not need to click on that folder. The next one is start here module zero. This is where you want to start. You'll see it's divided into web pages. Click on the first one to open the introduction. To go from one to the next, click on the right arrow. To go backwards, click on the left arrow. You'll find course information, including the topical outlines and a written syllabus if your professor has provided one. And on the next page, you will see copyright information and course license. You will find information about the course mode of instruction, which is online as well as making sure that your system is going to work with the course by running the system check. Here's a way to get help with D2L and two videos on how to use D2L. You are going to need to be able to produce work, take photos of it with a cell phone and produce a single PDF file. This folder here will help you do that and explain exactly how to create one file out of multiple images in Adobe. When we open the next page, you'll see the course materials. Your book is free and can be accessed online here and here. You will need a calculator, a scientific calculator for exams. You can use Desmos at home. Graphing calculators are not necessary for the course, but you can use them at home, but not on exams. The next page covers how much time a week you need to set aside for the course. The course content is the same, regardless of how many weeks it lasts. The course learning outcomes mappings cover what you're going to learn in the course and which modules they occur in. Each module itself also has learning objectives, and these are aligned to the course learning outcomes. Grading and assessment is the page you're probably most interested in. It tells you how you're going to be graded and what the percentages of each part of your grade will come from. These are tabs that will open up to explain more about the homework or how to organize your information for the semester so you don't lose things, and also how to write up homework so as to minimize the number of careless mistakes you make. There's information about quizzes and information about the discussion forum. You'll want to pay particular attention to this because there is a particular way that you need to upload a photo into a discussion forum so that it doesn't disappear. There's also a video on how to use the equation editor inside the discussion forum. We will complete one trigonometry project and you can find a little bit of information about it here. You will also complete reflections, 
which are reflections on your learning and a way for you to communicate with your instructor what is going well and what is not going so well. Some of your exams will need to be proctored. There's more information about that on the forms to complete and proctoring information page. There are also suggestions for a successful exam. Finally, if you have a learning difference and you need a learning accommodation, make sure to contact your home college's accessibility services office. The suggested learning activities basically go through and tell you what you're gonna do for each section of the course. The format is the same for all sections, but not all sections have all of these components. You'll always start by reading the section introduction, then you'll read the e-text, watch videos that introduce and explain the material, explore the concepts with interactive applets from GeoGebra and Desmos, practice by completing the homework, possibly watch more videos on a particular problem type, Consider working odd problems from the e-text. Contribute to the discussion forum. Reflect on your learning four times throughout the semester. Complete review assignments. Seek out supplementary resources, tutoring, and be assessed. There are rubrics for the reflections and introductory post rubrics. There are also rubrics for the discussion forum and for the trigonometry project. Your homework, quizzes, and exams are computer graded, but your professor may require you to submit your handwritten work for exams. This page covers the schedule for a 15-week session. It's divided into modules in the order in which the items should be completed. There is another format to this particular page, which is at the bottom, which follows a more typical calendar view, as you can see here. You may want to print this information out in order to have it handy to use at home. The forms to complete and proctoring information is a very important page for you to complete in the first week of class. It takes time to arrange a proctor, so you do not want to wait to the last minute. This first practice assignment is required practice submitting a PDF file to make sure you know how to combine multiple images into a single file. The next is just an information form to give your instructor a little bit more information about you and how they can best meet your needs. The proctor request form will be found here in this link. There are 13 colleges and 35 locations in the Colorado Community College system. If you open this link, it will take you to a page with a map. When you look at the map, as you scroll down, you'll see that there is a small sidebar up in the upper left corner. If you click on it, it will allow you to scroll through all the different campuses of all the colleges throughout the state. You can also make it larger so that you can see everything on the page, which may make it easier for you to decide which one is closest to your home. When you click on a particular one, it will take you to the information for that page as well as the home page for that particular college or location. If you're wondering how you'll take a proctored exam, then what you will do is take it in a testing center. Once you have obtained an approved qualified proctor, then your professor will communicate with the testing center to make sure they have the password. If you do not live close to a Colorado Community College, any college or university will probably have a testing center where you may be able to test for a small fee. Public libraries often also proctor exams. In extremely small towns, even the town hall or mayor might be willing to proctor the exam for you. Communicate with your instructor to find out what's a possibility. 
To get a better idea of what a qualified proctor is, read this section right here. The proctoring center receives your exam password from your professor who will email it to them, along with detailed instructions for administering the exam. Your professor will be able to access your exam through MyOpenMath and D2L. If they are, require written work, be sure the proctor scans it in and emails it to your professor before you leave the proctoring center. You'll know how you did based on what you receive as feedback in D2L. You do not need to take all your exams at the same proctoring center, but do fill out a different form for each one you need. The proctor request form will ask for the physical location, the name and work email of the person in charge of proctoring, as well as a phone number for the proctoring center. The next page is going to cover information about technical support. There is technical support available through the CCCS, which you can find here. My Open Math also has a technical support page that might be helpful on occasion. You may also want to contact the IT department of your local community college by searching for them through the Colorado Community College system. Now let's take a look at what a typical module looks like. This is review material, so you'll see that it starts with a brief introduction of what you're doing. It then has the module learning objectives and the topics that will be covered. You'll see that there is an introductory My Open Math practice assignment that you can practice taking in order to be sure you know how to complete answers within the system. When you click on the link, you'll see something like this. If you want to take it, it will pop up different ones and ask you to enter in a certain number exactly. You can go from one problem to the next by clicking here, or in this case, I think I messed up a little bit. You can click from one problem to the next here. I accidentally clicked on the change page, and this will take you to different ones and explain how to use the different systems in My Open Math. You do not need a MyOpenMath account and may not even realize you're in MyOpenMath. It will open directly into D2L. On the section pages, the format is always the same. It starts with an overview, gives the section learning objectives aligned to the module learning objectives, contains a link to the textbook, links to videos that introduce the material, different applets here that will help you practice the particular skill. Then it will have the homework assignment and links to the discussion forum or assessments if there are any. Let's take a look at the textbook now. If you create an account, you will be able to highlight parts of this and then highlight it and add a note to it. Go ahead and create a free account for your OpenStax textbook. The applets that you see are going to be different applets that will let you show the expression in simplified form, get a new problem, and practice whatever you're doing. There are all different kinds of problems here and all different sorts of applets that will help you to practice different concepts. Let's take a look at another particular part of the course. If we click on content, we can scroll down and take a look at module two. In module two, you'll see that there are sections in each one and a module introduction. When we get to the end, to the last section in a module, there will be a link in order to take the exam. The assessment will be here. Not all of your exams have to be proctored. Communicate with your instructor to find out which ones do. All exams have a review, which you should complete before taking the module exam. Assignments can be found under the Assignments tab, 
which is where you will find the required practice and student information forms, as well as the reflection items and the project. Again, the project will have to be a single PDF file that you create by linking different ones together. If you want information on how to do that, scroll down on the left to cell phone photos to PDF files and take a look at creating PDF files from image files. This will walk you through all the steps and show you exactly what it will look like and how to get Adobe to create multiple images into a single PDF file. You may also be interested in the discussions. This is where you will post your introductory post here and where you will post about different problems in each module. Make sure that you post your image files using the particular icon here so that it will stay within the system and not disappear. Copy paste tends not to work. Your grades can be found under the grades category. You can also contact your instructor by clicking on class list and finding your instructor's name, clicking on their name and emailing them within the system. When you have email, you will see up here an icon above the envelope so that you know you have email. I hope this video helps you understand how to navigate your course and that you will be most successful in completing Math 1440 Pre-Calculus.